Hello everybody, I'm Tristan Watson. I'm the new Assistant Professor of Nematology here at LSU Egg Center. And my responsibilities include nematode management on all crops that are grown in Louisiana, and that includes sweet potato. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a relatively new pest in sweet potato production, and that is the new invasive guava root knot nematode. What are nematodes? Nematodes are semi-microscopic roundworms. Uh, they can live in the soil, in the water, in plants, in animals. And some of the species can be quite damaging to crops when they feed on them. All right, so let's start with a little bit of history of this pest. Uh, guava root knot nematode was first detected in Louisiana in 2018 in Morehouse Parish. Some contaminated uh, storage roots were imported from North Carolina into the state. These storage roots were showing signs of galling and cracking. Uh, unfortunately, this plant material was bedded into the field. Uh, however, the grower did notice these symptoms. He subsequently sent samples away, and uh, we have determined that this was the guava root knot nematode. So we are taking steps to eradicate this nematode at this particular site. And more recently, in 2020, we detected another case of guava root knot nematode on certified pest-free material that was coming in from North Carolina. This material was bedded into the field, and we are working on eradicating this pest. So guava root knot nematode is a big issue here in Louisiana in that it's much more damaging and aggressive than our more common and widespread southern root knot nematode. This nematode can cause almost 100% yield loss when it is present in a field. So guava root knot nematode has a very wide host range, and it seems to be able to overcome the nematode resistance that we currently have available on many of the sweet potato varieties. And to make things even worse, this nematode looks almost identical to our more common southern root knot nematode on the microscope. So what we have to use, rather than microscopy, is more advanced molecular diagnostic tools. Here at LSU Egg Center, much of our research has focused on molecular diagnostics of this pest, surveying the distribution of this pest around the state, as well as identifying rotation crops and sweet potato varieties that may have resistance. So rather than doing conventional PACR, uh, research associate uh, Dr. Josie Rosende has been working on a new technique known as loop-mediated loop isothermal amplification, or LAMP. And she's going to be talking about this in more detail. Hello, I'm Josie Rosende. As Tristan mentioned, here in the lab we are using a molecular technique to identify the guava root knot nematode because it's kind of challenging to identify this nematode only looking at the micros in the microscope. So we use this little machine here. Uh, it's an equipment that actually we can bring to the field. And what we do, we look for differences in the DNA of the nematode. So that way we can um, identify this uh, root knot species, which is causing um, serious damaging to sweet potato. So last year we conducted a survey in the state to make sure that this nematode was not present in other fields. So we received samples and we went to the field to collect soil samples. And we collect samples from soybean fields, corn fields, cotton fields. And we receive a lot of samples from the sweet potato fields. And we didn't detect this nematode last year. But this year we will continue with the survey and hopefully we will not still not find this nematode. So another work that we are also doing here at LSU Egg Center is the screening of crop varieties to see uh, how these crops react to uh, the infection by this nematode. So we are looking into soybeans, corn, um, sweet potato, um, sorghum, and we are analyzing uh, how these uh, crops are, if these crops are good or bad hosts for this nematode. So we are doing this kind of greenhouse work, but we have the limitation because since it's a quarantine pest, we need to follow a special protocol to avoid the spreading of this nematode, 
but we got some good results last year and this year we are continu continuing with the experiments and we can uh, get more data about this nematode. In Louisiana, we're in a fortunate situation where, to our knowledge, we don't have any established populations of this pest in the soil. So some of the most effective management that we can do is provide uh, the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry inspectors with the tools that they need to accurately identify and diagnose this pest. LSU Ag Center will continue monitoring for this pest. We'll continue screening some different cultivars and varieties for their host status of this pest and hope to preemptively develop some management strategies if this nematode is to become a problem in the future. Mm -hmm.